I am here with Dr. Samra Mukhopadhyay. He's a professor of biological sciences and chemical sciences at the Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, Mohali. And he'll be giving a talk on Sunday entitled Prion Protein Biophysics Through the Lens of Liquid-Liquid Phase Separation, a tale of an intrinsically disordered tail. So why don't we jump right in and go ahead and tell us what a prion protein is. So uh, prion protein is a very intriguing neuronal protein, so which uh, exists in two forms. It's sort of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One form is functional, the other form is aberrant disease causing. And this protein was discovered at UC San Francisco about four decades ago. And uh, this protein undergoes a conformational conversion into a misfolded form, which is infectious, which can recruit the good, well-folded protein into the misfolded form. It uh, causes extensive neurodegeneration that is seen in prion diseases, and these are also associated with other protein misfolding diseases. And what is your research particularly focused on? So uh, prion protein is a, a very interesting protein which has two distinct domains. One is the folded domain, the other one is the intrinsically disordered unstructured domain. And like the prion protein can exist in multiple forms, intrinsically disordered proteins can also uh, exist in multiple forms and they are very important for functions. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the intrinsically disordered domain of the prion protein uh, has some functional roles which we don't understand. So what we found that intrinsically disordered form of this prion protein undergoes liquid-liquid phase separation. So I know that this is a relatively new area of study. Aside from educating your peers simply in the existence of these prions, what might be another sort of takeaway message that you would love to, um, to have people walk away with from your talk? Of course, there are quite a few uh, important aspects, yeah. uh, which is sort of broad aspects. One, of course, is the mechanism of conversion into pathological forms. Can we understand can you sort of discern the pathways by which these proteins undergo conversion into liquid droplets and further conversion into solid-like, gel-like materials? And can we inhibit such conversions, uh, which could be very interesting uh, avenue for therapeutics? The other uh, interesting thing, of course, is since this uh, liquid droplets can undergo conversion into gel-like materials, solid-like materials, we can also study material science. Can we use some of these condensates as materials for applications? Very cool. Well, I so look forward to your talk. Thank and you. thank you so much for thank talking so to much. me today. <laughs> thank you so much.